Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're in San Antonio, Texas at the annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Mark Gerdish, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Gerdish, it is great to see you again and thanks for being with me today. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, so great meeting, learning a lot, and at the same time, we're getting questions from patients this one came in from Brad, and it's all about something you specialize in, which is recovery protocols. And Brad asks, how many centers of excellence now use rigid sternum closure systems versus the old way of using just wire to close a sternotomy? It's a really good question, and um, as many people know, I'm a little evangelical when it comes to how we manage the sternum and actually how we manage the perioperative experience. So it's all part of our enhanced recovery after surgery program, which really we shouldn't even call after surgery because we start before surgery, uh, but a really important pillar or component to that is how we manage the sternum. So for the patients that we can't do minimally invasive surgery for, the patients that we can't operate between the ribs, we have to divide the bone. So now we have a bone that needs to be repaired. And the only medical discipline that doesn't repair a bone orthopedically after they divide it or when they treat a bone, for some reason, is cardiothoracic surgery. Now we, for the last several years, have uh, done rigid plate fixation. In other words, we've done an orthopedic repair for every sternum that we split. So we've really benefited from that and in the process have accelerated the recovery. We have delivered that message. Uh, there's been some increase nationally in the use, but it's only at about, of all the sterna that get put back together, it's only at about 5%. It's 100% for us. It's about 5% nationally. So someone says, why is that? And I don't have a great explanation, but I'll try to explain some of it. First of all, for us, our goal was to really condense the patient experience so that when they have heart surgery, no matter what the approach, the time out of their life, uh, the disability that comes from the operation, because surgery is traumatic and because there's some price that we pay, right? As a human being, when we have surgery, any surgery, pay some price, whether it's discomfort, limitation of mobility, et cetera. So our focus was to eliminate, you cannot really condense that and eliminate it. For example, our patients are allowed to drive right away. They can lift things right away. They can use their arms to get up out of bed and up and down from a toilet and do all the normal things. You can't achieve that if the bone has to be addressed as something delicate that is movable. So for 70 years, surgeons have been putting the bone together basically like a coat hanger, you know, twisting it and with a piece of wire and putting the bone together. And we just thought that that just didn't make any sense anymore. So now we actually continue to advance the, the principles that we use. And now we have a situation where most people, we can let them go completely back to their normal activity very, very soon after surgery. So you would say, well, why doesn't everybody do it? So uh, the only things that I can really come up with are Folks talk about the fact that it costs money, and it does cost money, but we've shown that it, the, it becomes cost neutral within about 60 days and probably upside within 90 days if we include the fact that patients don't have to go to extended care facilities and the incidence of complications related to the wound go down. Anytime there's a complication related, related to the wound, it's very expensive. But unfortunately, our healthcare system is based off of a 30-day pay structure. So you really have to have an institution, an institution that gravitates toward looking at the long game. What is the experience for the patient going to be after they leave the hospital? How are they going to be in 90 days, a year, two years, three years? The other is time. So at the end of the operation, the way we do it, it takes time. We have to conform titanium plates to the surface structure of the bone and fix those in place after we've brought the bone together. So right now we're working on more advanced methods of everything. How we can bring the bone together faster, better, more compactly so that other surgeons might feel a little bit more comfortable with their closure. And then are there methods of creating plate fixation that might not be as quite the investment of time that we make uh, because for some reason surgeons are uncomfortable with that. It doesn't take 
know, an hour, it takes an extra 15 minutes, but they feel like that's an issue. Those are the two main issues that I can, <laughs> I can come up with. Yeah, well, Dr. Gerdish, thank you so yeah. much for being evangelical yeah. in this situation, because I've talked to your patients who've had rigid sternal fixation, and there's very little pain that they ever talk to me about. And I'm sure this wraps into the whole decrease of opioid usage at Franciscan Health. And so on behalf of your patients and the people at heartvalvesurgery.com, thanks for everything you are doing at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, thanks, Adam. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.